California Contractors License Trade C10 Electrical Part 21 by Paint Thinner Gang. We are still going to be talking about ballasts and fluorescent lighting. So fluorescent lamps uh, ballasts generate heat when operating and will continue un until turned off. Class A ins insulated ballasts need to have a maximum ballast coil temperature of 105 Celsius degrees or 221 Fahrenheit degrees and a maximum ballast case temperature of 90 Celsius or 194 Fahrenheit at its hottest point. If it operates at higher temps, the life of the ballast will be reduced and cause unsafe conditions. There should be plenty of space if using multiple ballast enclosures. It pretty much needs a lot of ventilation when adding multiple ballasts or um, bulbs, you could say. Fluorescent lamps. Depending on, on the way fluorescence lamps Depending on whether the way fluorescent lamps vary, right? Ratings of fluorescent lamps are defined to the to the way it operates in still air at the temperature of seventy seven degrees um, Fahrenheit. Fluorescent lamps and ballasts provide good light output down to fifty Fahrenheit degrees. If the temperatures are lowered, then the light output decreases as well. Humidity, line, uh, line voltage, design, etc., all affect uh, as well. High bulb rated butt lamps recommended for efficient cold weather operations. Wool bulb temperature is the operating temperature of the lamp's wall that affects the mercury vapor pressure inside of the bulb. The colder the bulb, the less light output. Radio and sound interference. Fluorescent lamps produce radio waves by the arc of electrodes. Radio waves may interfere with radio reception by the direct radiation from the fluorescent lamp to the radio. The feedback from the lamp through the power line to the radio and direct radiation from the power source line to the radio. You can eliminate the in interference by separating the radio and fluorescent lamps by at least 10 feet or more, provide a good ground for the radio or sound system. Adding external circuit filtering, connecting radio and fluorescent lamps fixtures to separate branch circuits. Fluorescent lamps cannot be operated directly from the standard electrical circuit. It will not light up. There are three ways of starting the lamp. One of them would be the preheat cir uh, circuit. Heats that heats, it pretty much heats the cathode prior to creating an arc used in low wattage lamps, that'd be 4 watts to 20 watts, used commonly in desk lamps. Uses a separate starting point switch that is connected in, in series with the ballast. The electrodes in a preheat circuit need to heat need a few seconds to reach the proper temperature to start the lamp after after the starting switch is pressed the opening of the of the starting switch breaks the path of the current flow through the starting switch this leaves the gas in the lamp as the only path for the current to travel a high voltage surge is produced by the collapsing magnet field as the starting switch is no longer connected to power the high voltage surge starts the flow of the current through the gas in the lamp once started, the ballast limits the flow of current through the lamp. The second would be instant start. Starting circuits that prov starting circuits pr that provides enough voltage to strike and arc instantly. It was developed to eliminate the starting switch and overcome the starting delay of preheat circuits. An arc strikes without preheating the cathode when a high enough voltage is applied across the fluorescent lamps. The high volt the high initial voltage requires a large auto auto transfer transformer as an integral part of the ballast. The auto transformer delivers an instant voltage of 270 volts to 600 volts. Depending on the bulb size, the voltage rating, the larger the bulb, the higher the, vo the voltage. Instant start lamps need only one pin at each base because there is no preheating of the electrode. A circuit, a safety circuit is used to prevent electrical shock due to, due to high voltage. When the lamp is removed, the base pin acts as a switch interrupting the circuit to the ballast. The lamp is replaced by pushing the lamp into the spring lamp holder at the high voltage end of the fixture and inserting it into the rigid lamp holder at the low voltage end of the fixture. Both lamps must be in a place before the current can flow through the ballast winding. The circuit does not operate when the lamp is not in place. The third one would be rapid start circuits. These pretty much brings full brightness in two seconds. This type of circuit is used commonly in fluorescent lighting. Wrapped start circuits use lamps that have short 
low voltage electrodes that are automatically preheated by the lamp ballast. The rapid start ballast preheats the cathode by means of a heater winder of heat winding. The heater winding continues to provide current to the lamp after ignition. High density discharge lamps. A high density discharge lamp is a lamp that produces light from the arc from an arc tube. An arc tube is the light producing the element of a lamp, of an HID lamp. An arc tube contains metallic and gaseous vapors and electrodes inside that tube. An arc is produced as as an arc is produced the tube between the by the between the electrodes in within the tube. The arc tube is closed in a bulb which contains phosphor phosphor or diffusing coating that color rendering increases light output and reduces surface brightness. HID lamps include low pressure sodium mercury vapor, metal halide, and high pressure sodium lamps. All HID lamps are electric discharge lamps. An electric discharge lamp is a lamp that produces light by an arc discharge between two electrodes. High vapor pressure is used to convert a large percentage of the energy into visible light. R2 pressure for HID lamps are usually from 1 to 8 atmospheres. The HID lamps provide an efficient, long-lasting source of light and are used for street, um, street uh, lighting, parking lot, and general lighting applications. Low pressure sodium lamps. A low pressure sodium lamp is an HID lamp that operates at a low vapor pressure and uses sodium as vapor. A low pressure sodium lamp has U-shaped arc tubes. The arc tube has both electrode, um, electrodes located at the, at the same end. The arc tube is placed inside a glass bulb and has a mixture of neon, argon, and sodium metals. On startup, an arc is discharged through neon and argon and sodium metal. As the sodium heats and vaporizes, the amber of the color of sodium is produced. A low pressure sodium lamp gets its name because it's sodium inside because of sodium inside the arc tube. A low pressure sodium lamp has the highest efficiency rating of any lamp. Some low pressure sodium lamps deliver up to 200 um, lumens per watt of power. This is 10 times the output of an incandescent lamp. Mercury vapor lamp. A mercury vapor lamp is an HID lamp that produces light by an electric discharge through the mercury vapor. Mercury vapor lamps are used gen um, are used generally on light applications. Phosphor coatings is added to um, to the inside of the bulb to improve the color rendering characteristics. A mercury vapor lamp has a starting electrode and two main electrodes. An electrical field is set up between the starting and one and one main electrode when power first is applied to the lamp. The electrical field causes current to flow and an arc to strike. Current flows between the two electrodes as the heat vaporizes the mercury. Metal halide lamps. Metal halide lamp is an HID lamp that produces light by an, ele by an electric discharge through mercury vapor and metal halide in the arc tube. A metal halide lamp is an element is an element generally sodium uh, scandium iodide, which is which is added to the mercury in a small amounts. The metal halide improves the light output of the lamp. A metal halide lamp produces more lumens per uh, watt than mercury vapor lamps. <coughs> Sorry. A light produced by metal halide lamps do not produce as much color distortion as mercury vapor lamps. A metal halide lamp is an efficient source of white light. A metal halide lamp has a shorter bulb life than the other HID lamps. High pressure sodium lamps. A high pressure sodium lamp is an HID lamp that produces light when current flows through the sodium vapor under high pressure and, and a high temperature. A high sodium lamp is more efficient lamp than a mercury or metal halide lamp. The light produced from a high pressure sodium lamp appears as a golden white color. The, the high pressure sodium lamp is constructed with a with a bulb and an arc tube. There are two there the arc tube the, is pretty much the is made up of ceramic to withstand high temperatures. The bulb is made out of weather resistant glass to prevent the heat loss and protect the arc tube. HID lamp bases. HID lamp bases are designed to be easily connected and removed from the lamp fixture. Mercury vapor, metal halide, and high pressure sodium lamps 
use the same medium and muggle brass screws um, bases as incandescent lamps. Low pressure sodium lamps generally use a bayonet type base. Many lamps include a date code on the base to record the month and year of installation. Operating characteristics of, of an HID lamp. HID lamps take several minutes to warm up prior to full light and output being reached. Any short interruption in the power supply may extinguish the arc. An HID lamp cannot restart immediately after being turned off. The lamp must be cool enough to reduce the vapor pressure in the tube to, to a point where the arc can strike. HID lamps rendering. Color rendering is the appearance of a color when illuminated by a light source. For instance, a red color may be rendered light, dark, pinkish, or yellowish, depending on the light source under which it is viewed. Color rendering of HID lamps vary depending on the lamp used. Low pressure sodium lamps produce high to light. The color of the lamp distorts the true colors of the objects viewed under the lamp. The yellow light is produced by the sodium in a low pressure sodium lamp. Low pressure sodium lamps are generally used are not used where, where the appearance of people and colors are important. The yellow light produces severe color saturation on most lighted um, light colored um, objects. Mercury vapor lamps with clear bulbs have poor render rendering of red. The blue colors appear purplish, with most other colors appearing normal. Phos phosphor <coughs> um, coating coated bulbs improve color rendering. Blue colors viewed under phosphor coat coated bulbs still have slight purplish hue and a yellow color take on a greenish overtone. Metal halide lamps produce good overall color rendering. Red colors appear slightly muted with some pinkish overtone. High pressure sodium lamps have good color rendering, but reds, blues, greens, and violets are, are slightly muted. HID lamp ballast. HID lamps require ballast to limit the current in the lamps to the correct over, um, operating level and provide the proper starting voltage to strike and maintain the arc. Each HID lamp is designed for a specific lamp bulb, um, bulb size, voltage range, and light frequency. Different lamps are not interchangeable due to the fact that the lamp wattage is controlled by the ballast and not the lamp. HID lamp sizes cannot be interchanged without changing the ballast. Low pressure sodium ballast. Low pressure sodium um, lamps must be operated on a ballast designed to meet the lamp's starting and running requirements. Low pressure sodium lamps do not have a starting electrode or igniter. The lamps must be um, must be provided in an open circuit voltage of three to seven times the lamp's voltage to start and sustain the arc. A ballast is a ballast. Um, sorry, a ballast is a coil. React. Uh, is a coil uh, that would be considered reactor in a series with the power line leading to the lamp. The reactor ballast is, is used when incoming supply voltage meets the uh, starting voltage requirements of the lamp. This is common when the incoming supply voltage is 240 volts or 277 volts. Both 240 and 277 volts, um, pretty much mercury vapor lamps, are standard. A capacitor is added to some reactor ballast to improve the power factor. A reactor valve cost cost the least, but has poor um, lamp wattage regulations. A reactor ballast should be used only when line voltage regulations is good because of a five percent discharge. Sorry, five percent change in line voltage produces a ten percent change in lamp wattage in a reactor ballast. A high reactance. Um, auto transformer ballast is a ballast that uses two coils, primary and secondary, to regulate both voltage and current. A high reactance auto transformer ballast is used when the incoming supply does not meet the starting requirements of the lamp. Incoming voltage of 115 volts, 208, and 460 require a voltage change to the lamp. A constant wattage auto transformer ballast is a high reactance auto transformer ballast with a capacitor added to the circuit. The capacitor improves the power factor. A constant wattage auto transformer is the most uh, is most often used. A two winding constant wattage ballast is the is a ballast that uses a transformer that produces isolation between the primary circuit and secondary circuits. A two winding constant wattage ballast has excellent lamp wattage regulations. A 13% change in 
line voltage produces a 2% to 3% change in light wattage. Metal halide ballast. A metal halide ballast uses the same basic circuit as the constant wattage transformer mercury vapor ballast. The ballast is modified to provide high starting voltage required by the metal um, halide lamps. <coughs> High pressure sodium ballast. A, a high pressure sodium lamp does not does not have a starting electrode. The ballast must deliver a voltage pulse high enough to start and maintain the arc. This voltage pulse must be delivered every cycle and must be for 4,000 volts to 6,000 volts for 1,000 watts lamps and 2,500 volts to 4,000 volts for lamps. The starter that be the igniter is a device inside the ballast that produces the high starting voltage. A high pressure sodium ballast is somewhat like a mercury reactor. The primary difference is the added starter. The reactor ballast is used where the input voltage meets the lamp's requirements. A transformer or auto transformer is added to the ballast circuit when the incoming voltage does not meet the lamp's requirements. HID ball ballast loss. If all ballasts consume a certain amount of power depending on the size of the lamp, the amount of power consumed by the ballast be a be a, a large percentage of the total lamp power. With HID lamps, the larger the lamp, the less power the ballast loss is as per, as a percent of the of the total power used by the lamp. HID lamp identification. ANSI lists a standard code that is used to identify HID lamps. This code is used among manufacturers and allows for interchange interchangeability of lamps. HID lamp selection. When choosing an HID lamp for an application, think about using low pressure sodium lamps first because they are more efficient. Low pressure sodium lamps are good for outdoor lighting installations. The yellow orange color is acceptable for street, highway, parking lot, and flood light applications. Low pressure sodium lamps are also used for some, for some indoor applications such as warehouse lighting and other areas where color distribution is not crucial to an operation. The long startup time is, is no problem for outdoor lighting since the lights are generally turned on by a photoelectric cell at the dusk. Photoelectric cell switches may be adjusted to turn on at different um, light levels. Metal halide lamps are used for sport, street, highway, parking lot, and flood lighting applications. Mercury vapor lamps should be considered when the initial installation cost is, is of a major importance. These are used in all types of applications. High pressure sodium, so uh, high pressure sodium lamps might be considered when lower operating cost is important and some color distillation is acceptable. Uh, these may be used in parking lots, street lights, shopping centers, exterior buildings, and storage areas. Lamps. The amount of uh, excuse me, the amount of illumination produced by a lamp may be measured or calculated. That'd be the foot candle. Foot candle is measured using a light meter. A light meter is a portable instrument that measures light. A light meter measures from a fraction of a, ca of a candle foot to several thousand ca uh, foot candles. A number of readings are taken um, at different locations and an average of the reading is used to measure a light, um, light me uh, meter. It pretty much indicates the level of illumination only at the location of the light sensitive measuring elements. When measuring the amount of illumination, both horizontal and vertical readings are taken to measure both direct and indirect light. The intensity of a lamp of a light source is given is a given direction, depend um, pretty much depends on the angle of the light travels. Um, the light travels um, from the lamp. Some manufacturers rate lamps um, output in candela, that be CD. Candela is, is a unit of, of uh, luminous intensity produced by a light source in a, in a given direction. Illumination is before lamps are, are installed or measured after lamps are operation to uh, determine the number of foot candles that are produced on a given surface. This is checked against recommended light levels. And here we have some recommended light levels. Obviously, uh, if we're talking about hospitals, they need something with a lot of light. So that would be like a operating table, right? They need a large amount of foot candles, right? Or the, the illuminating um, essence of a light bulb. So that is typically recommended to be 2,500 foot loom, uh, candles. Now, once we get to street lamps, you don't really need a lot. One being is because even if you wanted to, nobody's gonna 
you know, put a really high end light bulb on a street lamp to, let's say, light up a whole block, right? You're, you're going to have everybody waking up that all that's going to be shining on the windows. So it's not going to happen. So you're going to want something less. One that can maybe give a couple feet, right? Let's say 10 feet of, uh, of light. And now you have another pole with 10 feet. So it's a constant thing. So you don't need that much. But that's if you want to give this a, a look out on how on how much light is recommended, if you're interested in this, give this a look. And obviously, there's more locations, more places. This is just a little example of, of where that will be needed. All right. So lighting requirements. The California Commission, uh, the California Energy Commission has specific design and install rules that um, that need to be followed. Residential, high-rise, and uh, hotel, motel guest rooms shall comply with the following. Luminaries for general lighting in structure and kitchens shall have lamps with an efficiency of not less than 40 lumens per watt. A, lumin a luminary, which is, a, which is the only uh, lighting in a kitchen, will be considered general lighting. General lighting shall be controlled by the most accessible switches in the, in the kitchen. Additional luminaries to be used for specific decoration effects need not to meet this requirement. Each room containing a water closet shall have at least one luminary with lamps with an efficiency of not less than 40 lumens per watt. If there is more, if there is more than one in the room, the efficiency luminary shall be switched at the entrance to the room. The efficiency requirement may be met by installing the luminary meeting this uh, meet, so pretty much to meet this requirement in an adjacent room that has complementary plumbing fixtures. Luminaries installed to meet 40 lumens per watt require, requirements shall not contain medium base incandescent lamp socket and shall be on operating switches from one incandescent lighting uh, from any incandescent lighting all incandescent incandescent lighting fixtures recessed into insulated ceilings shall be shall be approved for zero clearance um, yeah, shall be approved for zero clearance insulation cover ic by underwriters laboratories or other laboratories recognized by the Inter international conference of building officials.